Let me go on to our third speaker, Professor Goldberg from Industrial Engineering and uh, Operations Research. And if I can find his presentation. My short presentation. <laughs> You're off the hook with me now. While he's doing that, um, let me welcome you. You are the first class of the Fung Institute Leadership Program. So therefore, by definition, you, be, you are the leaders of the leaders. So I want to welcome you all here. How many of you have definitely decided to come? <laughs> so, okay, so we have some convincing to do. All right. Um, what, what I want you to do for a, just a second is to look around the room at each other. And I, I want you to ask, what if there were a technology um, that would allow you to visualize not just the faces in this room, but also the opinions and viewpoints of all these people around you? This is the thing we're very interested in doing. And it's a, it's a project that we call Opinion Space. Now, how many of you, uh, do any of you use uh, Facebook? Okay, uh, how about Twitter? Any Twitter? Anybody twi tweeting right now? Uh, that's my uh, Twitter handle if you want to, I need more followers. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we're, I'm very interested in is social media. And as you, as you, if you, unless you've been sleeping under a rock, uh, there is a huge explosion in social media right now. This is an area that's, that's growing in tremendously. This statistic is from June. I'm sure it's, uh, it's horribly out of date by now. The problem of all social media, the benefit is that there's lots and lots of information and communication going on. The problem is there's too much information going on. This is actually from a, um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg posted something on Facebook and he got 35,000 comments. The problem, we did a calculation and that would take, if you read about 20 seconds per comment, it would take you about eight days to get through it. So it's just, it's not feasible. The current techniques don't scale well. So we've been developing a technique that involves four different components. The first one is visualization. So we make use of the human retina, very powerful. And number two is the leveling the playing field. So we want to get a lot of people together in a common space to interact with each other. The third is that we use the wisdom of crowds. We use techniques from, from collaborative filtering and, 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 and network theory to basically combine their, their interactions in such a way that brings out the best ideas. And the last is a game structure that gives us an incentive structure to get people to participate and rewards them. The benefits of this approach of opinion space are two things. One from the side of an organization like a business or a nonprofit like a university is that they, they want to understand their communities. They want to know the diversity of their communities. They want to engage with them. They want to get feedback and creative suggestions. Particularly, we're interested in solving problems. So we want to be able to put out saying, here's something we're trying to address. How would you solve it to the community? And particularly, we also just don't want to take a survey and get information and process it for six months and then issue a report. We want to see results as they emerge. We want to see patterns and, and developments as they happen. From our side, as community members, what we're interested in is engaging with each other. We want to know how do we relate to other people in the community. We want to get, get to see and encounter a large number of different viewpoints and ideas. We want to learn from each other, express ideas, and if we go to the trouble of actually coming up with something interesting, we'd like it to be heard. So we're building on a number of techniques, and I won't have time to go into these now, but I'd be happy to talk about these with you later, one of which is a patent that my students and I obtained in 2003 for a new approach to collaborative filtering. And by the way, if you don't know what that is, it's the methods that are used to recommend books, movies, and other items on the internet, for example, on Netflix. We talked about Netflix too. Oh, perfect. Okay. Good. All right. So, there, the, this particular idea takes some of those ideas, those technologies, and applies them to social media. The first step, and I'm going to give you a quick demo. This is this is a just slides, but the live site is online, and this is a site that's now being used by the U.S. State Department to collect input from around the world on ideas related to foreign policy. So, what happens is you come to the site, you express your opinions on five different baseline statements. And so you do that by indicating whether you strongly disagree or strongly agree with each of the statements. Then what happens is you come to this visualization. And what you see immediately is where you stand um, with respect to everyone else. And we use dimensionality reduction to, proje to project you down into this space. You can see at a glance that you're not alone. Other people share your opinions. But also that not everybody shares your opinions. So there are people with many different viewpoints. And then you can start exploring them by clicking on the viewpoints of others and then you can read what they're saying about a particular problem that the, the State Department in this case is trying to solve and you can rate their comments in terms of how much you agree and how insightful the comment is. We take all that data and we use that to basically assign reputations to all the participants in the system. So the most insightful ideas become brighter, larger in magnitude, and the less insightful ideas get um, diminished. 
All right, so there's lots more to say about this. Uh, we have competitors. This is an area that's, very, that's actually growing right now, the whole idea of using social media for innovation. Um, and we, th we don't think any of them are that, are, are, are that good. Um, <laughs> but that's going to be for you to decide, because we have a number of partners that we're working with right now, um, some nice big players, including the Department of State and several others that we're talking with. And we also are proud to say that we were, uh, uh, the project was a, a winner in the Venture Labs competition last year. Um, so the, the, the capstone project we have in mind for you will be a, to get a group together to really look at this and think about four different aspects. First of all, data analysis. So we have collected lots of data from the case studies we've run so far, from the State Department, from General Motors, and, 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 and Humana. So we want to look at patterns and try and understand the data and the system better. We also want to develop new algorithms. So we want to think about new ways to make the system even better and also apply it to different contexts and platforms like tablets. We want to do a competitive analysis, so we want to look at what's, what else is out there, really understand it, and very deeply explore and dive and compare. By the way, we think a lot of those systems that are out there use binary models of approval, so it's either thumbs up or thumbs down, and that's very, very crude. So our model is much more sophisticated, and we can discuss more about why we think that is, but we'd like to confirm that through a really careful analysis. And the last part is to develop, is to look at new applications. So there's a whole host of people who have approached us as we've gotten press about this, from political campaigns to education to, to, uh, to semiconductor industry to advertisers, and we want to really understand what, are the mar what is the market potential for this. Okay, so this is it in a nutshell. The whole idea of it is how do you take lots and lots of data, lots of participants, and lots and lots of traffic, and distill it down to find those needles in a haystack. Thank you. Three minutes? Almost. Any questions? Yes. Could you explain more about the algorithm, the, al uh, the math that you talked about just now? Are you talking about development or assessment? Both. So the two, one of the things that's very, I'm oh, sorry, well, the, if you want to understand more about the math, is it involving development or assessment? Is that your question? Right. Right, so there's both. One of the things that we're very interested in is the, thank you. One of the things we're very interested in is the, is the fundamental algorithm, so the, 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 the theory behind this. So we have a number of different techniques. For example, it turns out that if you look at the statistics of how people rate each other, rate each other's comments, because we have this visual analog scale that gives us a continuous value between zero and one, rather than a binary, when we look at it, the, the statistical description is not well defined by a Gaussian or any other unimodal distribution. What you see is a very an interesting kind of distribution that we didn't, we didn't predict, we just saw it empirically. Then what we did was we realized that what we, would, we were typically doing was using the average, the mean, the first moment as a way of characterizing the, the optimal, the, 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 of ranking individual comments. But that wasn't very good once we understood the statistical structure of, the, of those ratings. So now we're applying a much more sophisticated one that builds it as a mixture of distributions. Then we can compute expectations and variances from that. And then we use a new idea, which is to use the lower bound on the confidence interval. And this gives us a much better means of measuring the value of each individual com contribu contribution. All right, that's an example in that comes out of the theoretical analysis. We're also interested in the development side of that, which is how do we take these things and make them very efficient? So for example, the patent I showed you earlier was actually both a little, some had a theoretical component, but it was also an efficiency, a technique to use to do efficiency. For example, that we, we broke the computation into an offline component that could be computed at night once every day, and an online component that was very, very efficient to compute. That way, the system could scale to very large numbers of people at the same time. So we're interested in both of those. And then we're also interested in things like human-computer interaction. How do we design systems that are engaging and interesting and make, take advantage of the latest tools that are available? Does, it, does that answer your question? I'm trying to do it fast because I know I have a very short window here. I know, but I, <laughs> I got to make up for all the time that Dornfeld took. No. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. It's a great question. It it's really depends on, on interest. If there were, if there were t enough people who were interested, I think there's enough work to do two teams and, and branch it out. For example, look at different subsectors and different sets of applications. Uh, for example, one could work more on the theoretical aspects, one could work more on the business project. So I'm really open. Um, uh, you know, as, uh, as you heard from Professor Pister, there, w this is a, we're, we're learning too. It's a big learning curve for us. And this is a, 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 we're very excited because it's a new way of thinking, a new way of uh, of, of, of teaching, and so we're going we're gonna to be adaptive. 
and we're going to march off in whatever direction makes sense, as he put it. Yes? Can you talk a little bit more about what you're saying with the visualization aspect where you take like five opinions on five different things and somehow represent that graphically? Right. Okay, good. So what we've done is we, we take your opinion. If you answer, once you, 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 you answer each of those different state, you express your opinion on those five different baseline statements, that pr provides you as a point in a five-dimensional space. And so what we use is dimensionality reduction. We use a projection to figure out a way of projecting that onto the plane so that you can see it. Now, there's a whole host of dimensionality reduction techniques out there. You can write books on this, on this, on this subject. One of the, the techniques we're using is principal component analysis, which is a very standard technique which has been around for a, a century. It's a very nice idea that, preserve, that maximizes the variance in the data. It works very well, but we're exploring other models. For example, there are nonlinear models. There are, there, there are a host of models that are out there, and we're very interested in exploring them. We're also interested in things that may be dynamic. So rather than just projecting it onto, obviously you have to work with the screen, which is limits you to two dimensions, but if you can make use of dynamics and essentially animation, you might be able to express higher dimensional data on that same screen. So we're really interested in those kind of techniques. Yes? Which? Which aspect? Um, that you're actually doing the just the calculations for how uh, insightful a format might be or it might not be. So the scalability questions are absolutely important. Right. So everything we do, we think about how fast these can be computed. We're being, we've been surprised because one of the things that's really changed in the whole landscape is processing power. We're take, we're, like everyone else, we're taking advantage of Moore's Law. So lots more can be done than what could have been done even five years ago. So a lot of the models are much more sophisticated. We can do much more sophisticated modeling of, the, of, of individuals' prediction of what they're doing, uh, regression of, where, of what other groups or subgroups are doing. So, but at the same time, we are always thinking of things. We cannot work with systems that are, that, that are, that are uh, non-polynomial um, algorithms. So we're, we're definitely interested in the efficiency questions and in practical questions. Because you can have the most sophisticated, efficient algorithm in the world, but if, it, if it's clumsy and people don't like using it, then it's not going to be effective. Yes? Are you guys exploring partnerships with the social media platforms you discuss, like Facebook, Twitter? Absolutely, yes. In fact, Facebook is particularly interesting right now because there's a lot of change happening. For example, it seems that more and more uh, yeah, organizations are using Facebook as their pre predominant way into the system. So in our case, for example, we have a Facebook Connect, a very, very preliminary prototype. And the idea there is that you can go into the system and then what you would see is everybody else who's participating in the discussion, so in the State Department's case, it's thousands of people around the world, but then you could click a button and say, what are my friends, where are my friends in this subspace? So you can call them up. So it's a really nice way, for example, when someone new comes to um, ask you to be a friend in Facebook and you, you don't really know them, you know, Facebook tells you a little bit like, you know, what friends you have in common, but it would be really cool to see, well, where are they in the opinion landscape? Like, how do we relate to each other? So those are the kind of things we're, we're interested in, too. Good. Okay. One, one more, and then I'll pass it on. Yes? Now, talking about that, are you afraid that people might be oversharing? It, it sounds like that could be too much information out there for people. Absolutely. So another whole question, and a big social question that I'm interested in also, and this is a, a, it's a perfectly timed question, because my other role on campus here is I'm very involved. I'm a co-founder of something called the Berkeley Center for New Media. And this is a very, very highly dis cross-disciplinary organization. We have 135 faculty from 35 different departments on campus. So everything from law to biology to philosophy, history, art history, as well as all the branches of engineering are involved. And that's the kind of question that we are very interested in from the Berkeley Center for from New Media perspective, privacy. And I think it's very fundamental. It's also generational. So what we care, what we, our, our standards of privacy from my generation now, uh, the old guard is very different than what yours are. And so we're fascinated to see how that's going to evolve and what kind of protections and consequences will, will, will matter in the future. Okay, great. Thanks. If you have further questions, goldberg at berkeley.edu. Thanks.